There's a little bit of everything in this garden. Ornamentals, fragrant flowers, sacred trees, even food in this Buddhist temple in the middle of a busy city Ho Chi Minh, Vietnam. I'm so excited to give you this garden tour, but first, let's pay a quick respect to the temple. This Chinese Buddhist temple is called Yok Wong Miu, translated to be Jade Emperor Pagoda. It was built in 1907 by a Chinese immigrant. This temple was built during the French colonial period. It has been restored for a few times and now it is one of the main tourist attractions in Ho Chi Minh. It is usually required that you take off your shoes when entering a Buddhist temple. As we enter through the French curved railings, we are greeted by this beautiful view. This garden tour will be given through my reflections, so take it with a grain of salt. All right, let's do the garden tour. As we come back downstairs, we are first greeted by this beautiful little corner garden. This section of the garden mainly consists of ornamental plants, except for these lotuses. They're not in season to flower right now. The lotus flower symbolizes enlightenment in Buddhism. Lotus plants are actually very functional. The leaf pads can be used to wrap food and steam them. The roots, the stems, even the seeds are edible. There's something about a garden that's tucked in the corner. It makes me feel like I'm in a secret garden. Under the long cover, there's a water feature with some fish in there. They're mainly black and white. I'm guessing that they are koi, which represents courage and good fortune. And maybe it might represent yin and yang, the balance of life. As we approach the wall on the other side, do you see what I see? These are passion fruits. They are not close to be ready to eat. I have seen both varieties of passion fruits in Vietnam, the purple sour ones and the yellow sweet ones. If you want something to cover your trellis that grows hardy and fruits well, you live somewhere not so cold, passion fruit may be it. I don't know what these shrubs are, but the ones in the foreground, that's a sunflower. There's some corn. This is the aisle, the grand entrance to the temple. There are sunflowers growing along both sides and some taro or bakha. I'm not sure it's one or the other. But I'm going to guess these are taros because they're growing one per container and taros are root vegetables. Here's a bonsai. There's actually one on each side. It forms an arc to frame the entrance. Here is the orchid section of the garden. I really enjoy the placements of these orchids. They make them look really natural and this climbing orchid reminds me of vanilla beans. Here the dead tree stomp has been utilized to grow orchids and the orchids really like bright indirect or filtered light so these are all mainly grown under the tree especially this banyan tree the banyan tree is a ficus a fig tree the older the tree gets the more of these arrow roots they send out buddha has found enlightenment after meditating under the banyan tree for seven days here's another bonsai it looks like galang galang but i cannot confirm that since there's no flowers like this tree galang galang is such a fragrant flower. You'd find them in a lot of shampoos and essential oils, but the main reason for this in the spiritual world is that it helps to balance the male and female energy. Even though this entire space is not exactly symmetrical, but there is some kind of symmetry which is very common to find in a Buddhist temple. That's why there is more orchids when you look across, and I really love that they're putting these orchids on these branches to form the entryway. This is a Mickey Mouse plant, also known as Ocna serolata. I think that's how you say it. It symbolizes good luck. That's why we like having them in our homes during Lunar New Year. Do you see that awesome heavy duty trellis in the background? Let me tell you more about that in a bit, but right now, let's take a look at this vine. Actually, it's died back. This was a bitter melon or bitter gourd. As Chinese say, xin fu hao tim. First comes bitter, then comes sweet. It's like a reminder going through life with bitterness and toughness, honing our skills and then reaping the benefits and the joy later. So the bitter melon made its way up that trellis and then climbed on that netting. Now that the bitter gourd has died back, they're putting the chayote to take its place. I'm actually not 100% sure that this is a chayote plant, but the leaf does feel and smell similar to chayote. And it would make sense to me that it is a chayote because in Chinese, the squash is called Buddha palm. I really didn't come here at the right time. Otherwise, this place would have been a lot more lush with vegetables. Here is the grand trellis that I want to show you, but let's talk about what's growing underneath it first. These are uh, spider lilies. 
I've seen them grown in many Buddhist temples in Vietnam. It's believed that these flowers would guide the dead through the cycle of rebirth. I really like that the metal structures are used to reinforce the trellis. It's very heavy duty. It doesn't look like there's an issue with the metal heating up even though in the tropics it can get quite hot. But the vines would grow in very quickly and cover up this trellis. The legs of the trellis are not even planted in the ground. They are just being held up by concrete that are used as weight. In the water bottle, I'm going to guess that it's used for trapping bugs and flies. As for the plant, I think it's an opal gourd. It's either the elongated variety or the one that looks like a bottle. I've seen drawings and statues of deities using these to hold water or liqueur. Follow the light as the sunflowers guide your way to enlightenment. I really appreciate the thought that they've put behind this garden. If only I knew the meanings behind the plants that I didn't know. I've paid my respect to the temple, sniffed some flowers, my energy is lighter than ever. I'm ready to take more trips, so be sure to subscribe so I will take you on the next journey.